now we will come to the next type of the ipc function that is the inter process uh, communication function which is the socket now sockets are similar to that of pipe except the fact that it allows the full duplex communication that is fully bidirectional communication so it is a, a device which provide a mechanism for bidirectional communication so a pipe could be used for inserting the byte stream by a process and deleting the byte from the stream by another process that is we have seen the concept of pipe so one end of the pipe we are having a right end another end we are having the read end so and mainly the pipe it is used only for unidirectional communication but in the case of socket bidirectional communication is allowed now you consider an example that is a card information which is to be transferred from a process a as a byte stream to the host machine process b and then b is going to send the message as a byte stream to a so there is a need for bidirectional communication between a and b so in such cases we need to have a pair of socket so uh, what do what else do we need to have we need to have the address information that is address information of both the a and b must be specified along with the actual data and we know that in such cases we have to have a protocol so for the socket uh, communication the two protocols which is employed are transmission control protocol and user datagram protocol so depending upon the type of the socket either of these protocol can be employed so protocol along with the byte stream information it is going to provide us with the source address as well as the destination address so depending upon the framework in which the protocol is working and depending upon the type of socket we are going to enable a bidirectional communication between the two process which is involved so socket you can consider it as a device which is as an end point for a communication and a pair of process which is communicating over a network employs a pair of sockets one for each process so we need to have the address information that is we need to have a ip address and concatenated with the port number so how can you define a socket it is ip address plus a port number so for several application maybe for file transfer protocol or for hypertext transfer protocol for each of these application we have got a specified declared port ports which are dedicated for the application so along with that port number if we have to mention a ip address also for the functioning of the socket so uh, here also we can employ a client server concept so the server wait for the incoming client request by listening to the specified port and once the request is received on that port the server accepts the connection for the client socket to complete the connection so as you can see the communication is going to exist between the pair of the sockets and all the uh, services application services they have got the well known ports for example like uh, ftp file transfer protocol server it listens to port 21 and hypertext transfer protocol server it listens to port 80 so all the ports below 1024 they are used to implement standard services so you can see between say uh, here two process or that is between a, a server this is a web server and this is a client application that is running on a host machine so both are having the bidirectional communication by using a socket device and you can see that along with the port number that is the application which uses a specific port numbers the ip addresses of both the uh, client and the server they are also being mentioned here then only the socket communication is being completed so when we are discussing about the different types of sockets there are commonly four types of uh, sockets and the first two are commonly most commonly used and the third and fourth they are uh, mostly used by the developers and uh, remember that there is no restriction that prevents the sockets of different types from communicating with each other so let us have a look upon the characteristic or the features of each and every type of sockets so first type of sockets is the stream sockets so in case of stream sockets there is a guaranteed uh, data transmission in the network and also the data is received in the same order as it was transmitted that is in a streamed manner the data transmission and the reception take place suppose say if you are sending uh, the packets in the order of say 
A, B, C, D, etc. It is going to arrive in the same order as it was transmitted. So there is a guaranteed uh, reception and uh, transmission. And in case of any error occurring, that is if the receiver has not properly received, an error has occurred, then what happens? Some form of uh, handshaking message will be sent back to the center. So this type of socket, you have to remember that it uses the transmission control protocol for data transmission. So either the sockets will be using the TCP or UDP for the transmission. Stream sockets employs TCP for data transmission. So next type is the datagram sockets. So unlike the stream sockets, all its features are going to be different. That is there is no uh, message delivery guarantee in case of uh, datagram socket. That is in whichever way we are sending it, uh, it is not a streamed type. The data will be arriving in out of the order. That is if we are having a packet, we will be sending the destination address along with the actual data. So these packets, they may be subjected to any type of uh, routing within a network. And obviously, uh, depending upon the constraints of the network, these packets may be arriving at any order. And unlike the stream sockets, uh, this type of socket is using another protocol that is a user datagram protocol for the data transmission. So in datagram sockets, we cannot guarantee the message delivery, unlike in the case of the stream sockets. Now the first two type of sockets which we have discussed, that is the stream sockets and the datagram sockets, they are being commonly used by the uh, normal users. But the remaining two types which we will be discussing is mainly for the developers. Raw sockets provide the users to access to the underlying communication protocol which support the socket abstractions. That is mainly for the developers. It is not intended for the general users but for uh, developers who may be interested in developing uh, the new communication protocol or already to the existing uh, protocol to provide maybe some cryptic facilities or something. So whatever uh, underlying protocol that these socket devices are supporting between the two process to access those protocols or to modify those, uh, the developers will be using these types of raw sockets. And uh, they are basically a type of uh, datagram sockets itself. That is, there is no dedicated connection. That is, data will be packed and sent uh, depending upon the needs. Okay. So, basically, uh, the raw sockets are, remember that, they are meant for the developers, which will allow these developers to manipulate the information used for transmitting, to uh, for transmitting the data. Maybe to modify any already existing protocol or to provide a cryptic facilities or something. And uh, the basic underlying principle is same as that of the datagram sockets. That is, uh, no guaranteed uh, reception will be there in the case of raw sockets also. Data will be packed and sent based upon how it is being uh, available. Now, next type of sockets, that is a sequenced packet sockets are also mainly meant for the developer, that is for the network system applications, etc. And uh, these type of packets, they are more similar to the first type of sockets, that is the stream sockets which we have dis uh, discussed. That is, there is guaranteed uh, data transmission and uh, reception. And in here, in this case, the record boundaries are also preserved by the sockets itself. Thus, more guaranteed uh, transmission and reception is possible. And another feature is that since it is accessible for the developer, uh, they can be, uh, they can manipulate whether the header on the packet uh, is to be on the basis of the sequence packet protocol or the internet datagram protocol. So they can actually mention which type of protocol is being uh, used along with the data. That is, they can use a header along with whatever data is to be sent or they can even specify a default header with all the outgoing data. So this type of packets also is mainly for the developers, that is for the network system applications. And this is more like the stream socket with the record boundaries also preserved. So we are having a guaranteed type of data transmission and reception. So these are the operating system functions which is provided for the functioning of sockets. For creation of socket, we have got a function. Then for combining of multiple socket, we have got the bind function. Then the listen means checking the status of the socket, whether it is uh, receiving uh, the data or whether it is sending the information. Then uh, for accepting or making the client server connection, we have the accept function. 
then the receive function that is a function for uh, receiving the data from the socket or basically reading function sending means the writing or the uh, we are sending the data uh, that is from the socket and then the close function that is for closing the connection of the socket so in this section we have discussed about another type of ipc function that is sockets the concept of the socket and the different uh, four types of sockets uh, and the operating system function for the sockets in the next section we will be seeing about another type of uh, interprocess communication that is a remote procedure called